I am not ready for the gains in this video. You'll see what I mean. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to Best and Worst Plants for Beginners, Anthurium Edition. I have already done a philodendron version of this video, so if you would like to watch that, I will leave the link for that down below. But today we're going to talk about Anthurium. And I've had to do the format for this video a little bit different to the last one. I will get into what I mean in just a moment. First off, a quick couple of disclaimers, because you know we love our disclaimers on this channel. So so this video is based primarily off my experience or in some cases I guess you could say things that I hear along the grapevine. That is my living wall. When I talk about my experience, I am the proud owner of the Rare Plant Shop, and here we have in excess of around about 4,000 plants, and I normally keep stock of 30 to 50 of one type of plant at one given time, so I get a really good rounded experience dealing with all these different kinds of plants. The last thing I want you to know is that when I factor these plants, whether they're, you know, best or worst for beginners, I'm not talking about the price whatsoever. I am not factoring in affordability. I could quite easily put something on this list that is very easy to care for, but it has a hefty price tag. Easy just doesn't always mean cheap, unfortunately. So please bear that in mind as we go. Through. Right, so as I mentioned at the start of this video, I've had to do things ever so slightly differently. So with the philodendron video, it was very easy to do the best and the worst for beginners. But when I sat down and I thought about Anthurium, I kind of couldn't do that. I couldn't really do this without coming up with a grey area in between. So with that in mind, I've kind of done a best category, an intermediate category, and a worst category. And there's not many plants in the worst category. And I'm saying this based on the fact that I don't really have many of the worst plants because obviously it wouldn't necessarily make sense. And Anthurium generally, a lot of people would agree with me when I say this, their care can be a lot more difficult than generally philodendron, right? And that is one of the reasons why I'm doing this video. So without further ado, let's get into it. I have my phone for the list of plants and I have them all down on the floor behind me and seriously some of these are huge because I've had to pick some of these up for my studio and the ones in my studio are they're good. You'll see what I mean. So we're going to start with the best category and this is in no particular order. So there is not a plant that is mentioned first that is say better than a plant that is mentioned last in this category. So it's kept pretty chill really. So the first plant I'd like to talk about is probably the easiest anthurium you can get. Okay, that said. I know that sounds like I've completely contradicted myself, but seriously, this is the easiest anthurium you can get hands down. It is insane. It is just insane. This is the wonderful Anthurium clarinervium. Now, these are actually propagations, so they're not exactly massive. They're very minimal, but this is it. I'll bring it up to the camera, and hopefully we're not going to have any focus issues this time, like last episode. But this is her. Really nice rounded leaf. It does have a nice point on it and it's got some beautiful veining. Now, honestly, this plant, I don't think I can adequately describe how easy it is. It's really tough. It's got beautiful foliage. Obviously, this is really kind of suede-like. I wouldn't say it was velvety. I'd say it was suede-like. I've said this before on my channel. It's really, really tough. So it has these really tuberous roots and I know a lot of anthurium get these kind of roots but this just seems to be a different vibe entirely. Both this plant and another plant that I'm going to mention later on have these really really awesome roots. They can dry out a lot okay so they ship really really well and when you saturate the roots again they don't freak out and rot essentially they don't really get over, overly dry. I'm not saying it can't happen of course I'm saying it's very unlikely these plants are excellent. They can wilt right down and plump right up and you won't really get too much damage on your leaves. Really, really, really easy plant. And they're a favorite. And I think these plants, I don't actually know how rare they are at the minute. You could almost say it's a, it's borderline a common plant in a lot of areas, which is great news if you want to get into anthurium, okay? If you want to get into anthurium and you have no idea where to start, opt for this plant. Even if it is more expensive in your country, seriously, opt for this plant you're gonna be absolutely fine. It's one of my favorites. As I say, this isn't the best specimen, but there's the other leaf you want to see. See, it's cute, it's just adorable. These plants can get huge, by the way. These leaves next to my head are absolutely tiny. They can get absolutely massive, so they're really, really worth it. Toughest little things I've ever known, really. There has been nothing I've had in this shop that is even remotely as tough as this. It just, it's, it's not possible. It's not possible. 
So yeah, I don't know how easy they are to get. I know in the EU, they're a lot easier than in the US. I'm not too sure about the UK. I don't really see them often. So I suspect they are the easiest to get in the EU. I don't know. I don't know how the climate is on these. I have a few of these in my shop, but as I say, they're propagations. A lot of them are growing from chunks. So this is like the only one I can really show you. But this one's good enough to show. It's really cute. We'll just get that back on camera. I realize it's focusing on me, but if I at least put it in line with my face, then it will be okay and we shouldn't get any issues. So there you have it, Anthurium clarinervium. Seriously, I cannot stress this enough. Just trust me, if you are wanting to get into Anthurium and you don't know where to start, get one of these. They are brilliant. So the next plant on my list that is brilliant for beginners is not the only variation of this plant you can get. It does actually come in different forms and honestly, they're all kind of the same. I wouldn't say one was particularly more difficult than another. A lot of people might disagree with me, but I would say generally on the whole, the different variations of these plants are reasonably easy. So the next plant on my list that is great for beginners, in my opinion, is the wonderful Anthurium forgetii. Now, what is special about it? You may be able to tell already. I'll hold it up to the camera. This is, by the way, this is a variation of forgetii that has very silver veining, as you can see. You can get a all green form, which I think I've shown in a video a couple of weeks ago, and you can get a dark form, but the dark form is very hard to get. So this little guy right here is awesome because he's all rounded off at the top. He doesn't really get lobes on his leaves. He just stays really round. He elongates, not too much, some, some are a little bit rounder than others, I would say, and you get these beautiful points on the end of the leaves. Now, this guy's admittedly a little bit special. This is probably a little bit more silvery than your average silver veined forgetii. You can get them. Obviously, it's just natural variation. This guy's really pretty. I think we'll keep him for a long time and grow him out. Hopefully, this persists because that is mega, mega silver. I'm loving that. I have him and I have one other in the next aisle, I think, that are quite silver, and the rest of them aren't anywhere near as silver as this. He does have a little bit of yellowing here, it's just his old leaf, but he's very, very cute. Honestly, I don't find them bulletproof, not like the Clarinervium that I just showed you before, but I do find them very, very easy, and it's nice if you want an Anthurium that's not going to get stupidly large, stupidly quick as well. The Clarinervium obviously is going to get a lot bigger than these guys get. This you can get from a smaller plant, such as this one, if you are full up on space or you just want a smaller plant to test. These are quite good for that because then they, obviously they will get bigger. Obviously plants grow but they're not going to completely take over really quickly. You've got a lot, a lot of time to size up, you know, stuff like that. So they are really, really great for that. Look how pretty it is though. I don't know if it's like doing it justice on camera because it is so small, but trust me when I say that these things are absolutely beautiful. I used to have an awful lot of these. I think I sold a lot of them last year, but I don't really have many now. I only really have these little ones that I've grown from chunks, but honestly, really, really gorgeous plant and very, very good for beginners. As I say, it's not just this type, there's a green type as well that I may have. Do I have a green type? Hang on, I'll get the green type because I think, give me one moment. Okay, so here's the green type. If I just hold up the other one again, let me bend down and get it. Hopefully my camera's not gonna play, play silly today. This is the all green version and it is still very beautiful. Obviously, that's the difference. Obviously, one has silver veins, one doesn't. This one is still really nice though. I think I featured this one in my cheap rare house plants video. This was on it because they're quite affordable. Forgetty Eye in general are quite affordable. Obviously, this one's gonna cost you more than this one because people like this one more because it just looks a bit cooler, I guess. But seriously, that one's not to be sniffed at either. I really, really like this one. It's kind of a favorite of mine over the silverness. I don't know why. I just, there's something about just plain green that I absolutely love. Look at that, it's beautiful. It's a really, really pretty plant. So that is Anthurium forgetii. Super easy, super chill, different variations. Give them a look on Instagram if you feel like that's something you might want. I really recommend them and they're quite affordable compared to a lot of other Anthurium, which is really, really nice because Anthurium generally are quite pricey. Let's not lie. A lot of the really sexy Anthurium, which I do have today, they're very good. They are definitely on the pricey side. Anyway, this next plant on my list is pricey. There is no two ways about this. This is pricey. This is usually late troubles. This is not a cheap plant at all. Maybe if you're in a certain part of the world and you're very lucky, then it's affordable. But honestly, I kind of get why it's expensive. I hate saying that, but I kind of do. So anyway, this next plant I'm going to show you has some acclimation damage and then a good leaf that is ever so slightly singed because I may have left my blinds open and it was sunny and I regret it. 
But the next house plant that I think is good for beginners is the Anthurium Luxuriance. And seriously, I can see how good that looks on camera and that looks ridiculous on camera. What is that? Oh my God. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> wow. 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 Seriously, don't get me wrong, they look good in real life, but there's something about when you put it on a camera, I, I can't explain it. You kind of have to make videos to know what I mean. Sometimes just plants look better in person, sometimes they look better on a photograph, sometimes they look better on video, it really depends. This plant, oh my God, I would almost say it looks just as good on video as it does in person, and that's not often that happens. Anyway, enough of me blabbering on. So, quick tour of the plant before I'll tell you what I love about it. This is Anthurium Luxuriance. Oh my god, let me get right up to it because that's that's got to be a thumbnail today because that's ridiculous. So this is obviously a new leaf that's grown with me. It's very hot, it's sexy, we're loving it. I'm borderline sexually attracted to that. I think, who the hell isn't? That's amazing. This leaf here is not so sexy. This is essentially a leaf that's, that the plant has been sent with and it didn't like me and it's acclimated. So I know the new leaf is fine because this leaf's been out for three weeks or more, perhaps. So this obviously is what can happen when you import, well, anything, but particularly anthuriums just hate life. Normally, by the way, if it's brown around the edges, it's a humidity thing. If it's brown on the tip, it's a water thing. So this insanely sexually attractive plant is very, very gorgeous. It's got this, it's not really, I wouldn't call it corrugation. It's like a really, I don't know, it's like reptilian almost. It's, it's quite hard. It's very, very tough and leathery. That's possibly why it's tough. And I remember getting this in and I thought, you know what, this could be a tough plant because it's very thick skinned. And I can tell you that it is tough. I'm not the best at growing anthurium. I'm just gonna be totally honest with you. I'm not, I'm not the best, but this kind did it on its own and that kind of speaks volumes look at that jesus christ so also a really cool thing about these plants is the petiole and i don't think i'm going to be able to show you at all you might not be able to see that that's really tough to show you but the petiole has kind of got these like ripples on it i probably can't show you and i can't get close enough to the camera i don't think i know this plant has a price tag right? I'm not stood here saying, oh, get it. You should totally get it. Like, what's the problem? I know they're expensive, okay? But you didn't ask me what the cheap anthuriums were. You said what's good for a beginner. And when I assume a beginner, yes, of course, price comes into it. I understand that. But also, it's about ease of care more than anything. You know, you can be a beginner and have a bigger budget, I guess. It's not, it's not completely limited you know what I'm saying? So I really wanted to keep this video in line with how easy they are to care for, regardless of price. Because honestly, guys, the price is determined by availability, right? So why would I factor in price? That's probably not a wise idea. And it would mean that these videos don't really age very well. It would mean that if you watch this video in, say, two years time, what I'm saying about this being expensive and not recommending it to you might be a lot of crap because now it's cheap. You see what I'm saying? You feel me? I can't really articulate what I'm saying, but that's kind of what I'm saying. Anthurium luxuriance, genuinely very easy. I don't find this one particularly thirsty. Now I will tell you that my experience with these plants is limited. I haven't had a ton of these in and that is because they're high value, but I haven't lost any of the ones that I got in. That's a big tell for me. And I've clearly had no issues growing them. I tell you what though, these self-watering pots are actually quite heavy and I know I've got a few of them to lift up for you today and it's going to be ridiculous. It really is. I'm going to get so much gains, which is really good because the gyms have just opened up and I'm like very flabby. So we could do with a little bit of a workout. You feel me? Okay, this next plant, I'm going to tell you that I don't know much about it. On camera, I was supposed to research it. I didn't. I haven't had time, so I can't tell you too much about it, but I will put some information up on the screen because, for example, I know that this plant is a hybrid, but I'm not sure what it is a hybrid from. I think it's it's probably Pedatum and something else. I don't know. But this is, I think it's Anthurium macrolobium. And I have trimmed it off because it grew leaves, but they were growing in silly directions because it's been on a shelf on top of a light. So the leaves, the petioles were pointing downwards to get to a light. So I've cut it because honestly, it needs propagated anyway. And that's what I would do. I would take the leaves off and I would propagate the chunk. But this is a kind of example of Anthurium macrolobium. They get better than this. This is just starting to mature now. Before that, the leaves were like a triangular shape, but they were kind of a little bit wavy. I'll see if I can pick an old leaf up. I actually to illustrate my point so there is this leaf here nothing wrong with it again it was just kind of all over the place it needs propagating but here is one leaf so they start kind of like this 
and then they get a little bit bigger. This is from the same plant, of course. So as they grow, they just get a bit more Edward hands. Could you say? Now these plants are stupidly easy and I know this because I've forgotten about this plant so many times and it hasn't died and it pops like no tomorrow. Both this plant and Forgetti Eye just seem to pop. If you don't know what I mean by pop, I mean it grows new plants from the base of the plant. But yeah, I had to mention this because I was planning for this video and I saw it in the corner. I was like, why is that not dead yet? And honestly, that tells me it's easy. Now, because I haven't had time, because I'm going to be completely honest with you and tell you that I haven't researched it, I don't know how available they are. I cannot tell you anything. Again, I will put a little chunk of text that anything I know on the screen on the bottom, including the correct name, the parents, everything. So you probably already know everything by the time you've got to this point. But it's really, really cool. And I'm pretty sure they do get very, very fingery and very... How do you even describe it? Whiskery, maybe? Really, really good plant. Very glossy in appearance. They're not velvety at all. Very quick growers as well because they just kind of take over. I don't just have this plant. I have maybe five or six pots of these and all of them have pups in the plant. Like all of them. It's ridiculous. I just can't stop growing them. But you've got to trust me when I say it's hard as nails. I know this because it hasn't died. All it's done is pop. It can tolerate underwatering like nothing else. I know this because I've forgotten it. And of course, as I said at the beginning, this video is based on my experience. And my experience is that these don't really die. How nice is that? Look at that. Yes. Yes, boy. Well, I tell you what, we did a mustache on the last one, didn't we? Can we do a beard with this one? Can we like... No? No. Nah. The moustache was way better. So the next anthurium that I would genuinely recommend for beginners, I think people are going to be very happy about this. This is not the best specimen. Take a shot every time I say this is not the best specimen. But if you've seen my studio tour, I mentioned this plant. It was on the top of my shelves and I basically told you guys that it was really ugly and gangly in the shop and I kind of adopted it in the hopes that I could make it sexy, essentially. So it's kind of on the road to greatness, but it's not really there yet. I mean, it depends if you care about this sort of stuff. Uh, but this here is my amazing, weird Anthurium vicii, also known as the King Anthurium. This, again, not the best looking specimen. We have a weird leaf here that it came in with. Then we have this one here that, that's better. It's just decided it, it doesn't want to live with me and it wants to move out, I guess. And then we have this one that's kind of starting to play ball. Now, if I show you up a little bit closer, you could see how unbelievably sexual it is. It basically has abs is what it is. So this leaf is incredibly glossy and in my experience anthurium with glossy leaves tend to be very easy generally. It's generally not a problem. Really really glossy leaves and these tend to get longer with age and trust me when I say they can get really really long. They can and it's hot. Trust me it's hot. They can look a little bit freaky and a little bit alien like to a lot of people so maybe not everyone loves these. I don't hear anyone really hating on them generally. They do have a bit of a value attached to them. I wouldn't say it's insane for an anthurium. I think it's it's reasonably low troubles at the minute. Don't quote me obviously but they they're good. If you want to buy one they're good and they're not gonna die on you and you will be fine generally. Obviously I'm not saying they're indestructible. That goes with any plant on this list but you will probably have a reasonably easy ride. I don't find them to ever get pests either, which is a bit, bit random. I think Anthurium generally don't seem to get pests, or at least for me, it's all about the philodendron to get the pests. Really, really easy plant. Again, I think they're generally hard to get. I don't tend to see many places stocking them. Honestly, hand on heart, even I don't have that many of them. I think I have a tree and that'll be about it. So it's not the easiest plant to get, but it might get easier. They went through TC production a while ago, and I don't know if they're still in TC or they've stopped. I don't really know. But you might be able to get one of these if you can and you like it, if it's your vibe. Instagram it, have a little look online, see if you like it mature, obviously, and give it a go. Again, really, really good one. Really, really good to care for. Loving that. He's nice. He's a nice boy. Next plant on the list is... phone keeps locking me out. It doesn't recognize my face. I'm a little bit offended, you know. Next one. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay, no, I'm not, I'm not sad at this plant. This is actually my favorite anthurium, pretty much. It's just really heavy and it's massive, but you're gonna love it. Trust me, if this doesn't do for you, nothing will. Nothing will. Let me go grab it because it's off camera, because it's too big. It's really too big. I've gone down an extra aisle, by the way, to grab this. This was in my studio. I've had to move him downstairs and it was difficult to get downstairs, to be honest. I can't even hide this plant while I describe it because it is that big. It's ridiculous. Look at this, seriously. One leaf here, one leaf here. 
and one leaf here. This is, give me one moment because I have hair in my face. This here is a great plant. Can you tell? Can you tell? This is Anthurium crystallinum and oh my goodness me, if this doesn't do it for you, I tell you now, Anthuriums are not for you. This is hitting me in the face. It's so big. It is stunning and it looks fantastic on camera. It looks just as good on camera as it does in person. Look at the size that's next to my head. Literally, that is what is known in the trade as a large boy, right? This is a large boy. That's the leaf. I don't know if it was a leaf previous. Yeah, I think this was the leaf previous to that. And this, oh my God, I'm trying to rotate it. I really am. That's the leaf prior to that. Now, these other two leaves were from my flat. If anyone remembers, I got this, my God, so long ago, literally like two years ago. And I think it didn't grow for ages. Then I reported it and then it just hit a massive growth spurt. And a while ago, I put it into a really bad self-watering pot. I only recently reported it into this bad boy. And he's just huge. Like, what the hell? He basically got too big for my flat, by the way, as you can probably tell. He got way too big for my shelves. Seriously, I don't... I need to stop gushing up this plant and tell you about it. So, this is a gorgeous anthurium. It's quite rounded in shape, not quite like a forgetty eye, but generally it's very wide across this part of the leaf. It's got beautiful silver veining, if that wasn't very, very obvious. And they're generally quite easy to care for. The tips don't go too quickly on them. I don't get too much of a problem with AG bacteria or fungus like I do on other plants. It's a really, really nice one. Now these plants, if you can't already tell, they size up quick. So if you want a plant and you want it to size up and you want big sexy veining, then go for this one. If you don't and you want some that sizes up much slower, obviously go for the forgetty eye that I mentioned prior. I would get a forgetty eye and compare it right now, but I don't think I can. This is full of water and it's heavy. It's planted in pond, by the way, not soil, but I mean, the gains, the gains. Seriously, look at that. There's one again. There's the other one, because we need to document this, because he's only going to get bigger, you know, and it's going to be absolutely amazing. I wanted to put him on the wall. I haven't done that, because he's, I just want something big up there. I'm putting... How rude. I'm sick of putting everything large up just on the wall, so I wanted to keep this upstairs. Really easy care, sizes up quick, beautiful silver, reasonably easy to get. I don't see a struggle for these generally. I think if you want one, you can probably find one. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous plants. I'm going to put him back now because he's just ridiculous. I don't know what's next on this list, but if we could just pray that it's nothing heavy, that would be great because my right arm is really feeling it right now. So the next plant on my list is very, very nice if you want something trailing or hanging as opposed to something that grows upwards as opposed to a climber or anything like that. This one's really, really nice for that. I've sworn by this plant since I first got it. It is just amazing. This is just as easy as the Clarinervium. Honestly, it is. It's fantastic. This here is the Anthurium vitari folium. It's not amazing. It's been sat on the shelf and this is a new leaf come out and it's kind of solidified. So it's not as good as it could be, you could argue. But the cool thing about this plant is it has really tuberous roots, which are the same type of roots, quite honestly, as the Clarinervium. So they're just a little bit more meaty and chunky. They can take being underwater like nobody's business. Anthuriums like to dry out a little bit anyway, but this can really take the extra. If you go away on holiday and you leave it to dry, you're probably going to be okay. These leaves are so leathery. I don't think you're going to be able to see on camera. Obviously, this boy needs a feed. I haven't really fed them over winter. That's why they're looking a little bit tired, but they're just so leathery and tough. It's a tough, tough, tough plant. I always say that the leaves feel like actual leather, like you could make an actual belt with them. They really do feel that tough. If you want one of these plants, I'm sure you'll agree. They're just amazing. They really are. New leaves come in very, very slim and they kind of expand outwards. Like most anthurium, to be honest, the leaves start small and then they expand as they harden off. Really beautiful plant. I don't know how many of these I have. They're kind of all over. Are there some in this aisle? No. I think they're in the next aisle. I can't see. There's plants everywhere. I had a lot of these in last year and they, they went down a treat, to be honest. And I'd love to know how it's doing for you if you had one, from me or from anybody, really. I want to know what you think of these plants because for me, they are really, really easy. And for a beginner house plant, if you want something that is not... Uh, have I got one in the background? Yeah. This is a Skindapsis... 
It's skin dapsis anyway. But if you want something that isn't the norm and you want to try an anthurium, you just want something that's totally different in your collection, maybe hanging off a shelf, hanging from the ceiling, anywhere you want, this is your boy. This is obviously, I needn't say it, but I will, this is also what is known in the trade as a long boy. It's, I mean, it's easy to see why. It's not the longest boy that I've ever seen. But it's pretty good. It's, I would class this as a smaller medium, maybe a medium. But he's lovely, isn't he? He really... I, I might take him. I might put him upstairs, you know. I think it'd be... I keep hitting myself with plants all the time. Where are we now? This is going to be a long video. I can feel it. I can feel it within me. Right, last one in the best category. This one looks like shit. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's, again, it's the same thing as a macrolobium. It's because I kind of forgot about it. Now, it hasn't grown through all this neglect, but it hasn't died either. And I think that's pretty good. So, the next plant on my list, I'll pick him up because he is awesome. He's massive. Um, oh, he's stuck in my other plants. There we go. Next plant on my list is none other than Anthurium lineolatum. Right, obviously you will notice he's had a bit of a trim there. He got a little bit crisped, you could say. This leaf was actually lying just, just on the concrete. And I think it's just dried out from touching the concrete or whatever have you. But honestly, you just got to trust me when I say these are great plants. Now these petioles wouldn't be that long. These, these would be shorter. It is quite a leggy plant, don't get me wrong. Not full on gango, but it is a little bit leggy, but it shouldn't be this leggy. And I remember it not being this leggy. This is obviously due to the fact that it's struggled to get to light or get to something since we moved here, essentially. So just pretend that the petioles aren't usually that long and just, I guess, take note of how this looks. Now these are, it's weird to me because these leaves are paper thin right, paper thin. They're not glossy and they're not velvety. I don't know what texture that is. I actually don't. I don't think I can put my finger on what that is. It's like soft touch, but it's not velvet. But anyway, it's got really nice dimension all the way down the leaf, obviously. This is a little bit of a wide leaf. They can go a bit longer than this. I don't know how easy these are to get. I've got absolutely no idea. I only have one, and that's because it was my personal plant from like, wow, a long time ago, put it that way. That's why it's in this pot still. I've just kept it in its old pot. The pot's like smashed. Like, you can really see that this has been unfortunately neglected. I'm going to fix that, of course. I will find a nice pot and a nice spot to put it. I suspect the studio. Um, and we'll just see if he grows well. But honestly, you've got to take my word for it. They are great plants for beginners. Even though they are paper thin, it's something that can get big. It can get lengthy. It's got good dimension. And I'm pretty sure these don't break the bank. I don't think they ever did break the bank generally. I think they are very affordable. And it's probably because no one really knows about them. No one really cares. No one really has them. But they are great for beginners. They surprised me. I'll be honest, they totally surprised me. This guy should not be alive right now. Genuinely should not be alive. He really shouldn't, but he is, and I love him. I, it doesn't look like I love him, but I do love him. I just forgot he was there, honestly. Really, really great plants. I'll pop him down. Where can I pop him down? Let's pop him over here, because he's just so long. He gets in the way of everybody. Bless him. He doesn't mean to, you know. He just gets all up in other people's business. It's not his fault, honestly. It's not his fault. It's my fault. It's not his fault, it's my fault. I will insert a picture of what these things look like in their full glory right now. So you can see, I should hopefully, I really hope I still have a picture of this. I think I do. When I first launched my shop, I had these in and they were just stunning. They were really stunning. They were beautiful. So if you can get your hands on one, consider it because I suspect the price isn't very high. I hope I haven't said that and then this video comes out and then they're actually loads of money. Uh, I don't think they are because no one talks about them. So I don't see why they would be loads of money. Let me know in the comments if you own one if you love it if you hate it if you think it's easy if you think it's difficult i would love to know now then i think we're out of the best category and as i mentioned at the start of the video i'm doing this slightly differently because it's anthurium and there aren't really clear winners and losers with anthurium it's kind of a sliding scale anthurium generally for most people i would say they're not the easiest to care for a lot of people are very very put off or disheartened by the idea of looking after anthurium or having them in general because people see these massive price tags and hear about them dying or going crispy or whatever and honestly i feel your pain i'm scared too okay genuinely in my shop I'm scared too. I have a wall of anthurium over here. I think it's the equivalent of one of these aisles. These aisles, they're in trays of two, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Twelve trays full of anthurium. And I'm terrified of them. Seriously. 
So it's not just you. Honestly, it's not just you. Do not even worry about it. And that's why I wanted to do this video, right? Because I, I want to try and help people get over that a little bit and just dip their toe into Ethereum. So without further ado, I'm going to tell you what's intermediate. So it's not the worst. It's not the best. A lot of these are on the list because I think they're more sought after. So I couldn't really not mention them, if you know what I mean. I feel like I would have done this video and people would have asked me where these plants placed in the list if they weren't in the best and they weren't in the worst. You feel me? Enough talking, I'm gonna get the first plant. I actually have two of them here. I meant to pick one up from the shop, but then I went and picked up mine because mine is really sexy and I wanna show you it. So the next plant is of zero surprise to anybody. This is my first intermediate plant for beginners. So again, not the best thing, not the worst thing, somewhere in the middle. This is my gorgeous Anthurium Waraquinum, also known as the Queen Anthurium. Yes. It's gorgeous. I don't know why we've got a bit of a fat boy here in front, and then these are more of like the long boy variety. I don't really get what's going on. Um, a little bit about this plant very quickly. There are more than one here. There's actually two on the stem. That's why it's looking a bit more bushy. So please don't think, oh my God, she grows her anthurium super bushy. How is she doing it? It's not, it's two plants. This is of course the newest leaf here. It's hardened off now. It took a while actually, but it's hardened off. I do have another one, random one at the back here. But really, I think the part is in the front. That's because I sit it on the shelf this way, whereas these leaves here are kind of at the back, just because it looks better. So if it looks familiar, you may see little pieces of this anthurium in my videos when I'm filming upstairs in the studio. So this, this isn't an easy anthurium for me, personally. I know some people are just a whiz with these. Some people just can't keep them alive. I think there's a bit of a divide. That's another reason why I'm putting them in intermediate, to be honest. They're okay. I think they love high humidity like that. You can't give them too high humidity at all. They really, really love it. If you want to start off an anthurium that you've got from a stump, maybe you've either imported it or you've bought it from a shop and has turned into a stump, I highly advise you to put that stump in a bag. So if you've got your pot, you know, whatever, get a, a carrier bag, a plastic bag, a clear bag and bag it up, blow some air in it and bag it up. And I tell you, I promise you, you'll get growth out of that thing. I promise you. Um, I've done it in here to some, to some stuff to get them going sometimes if they don't grow. So that's a way of doing it if you've got a stump, by the way. So don't be put off. Honestly, get a bag on that thing. You'll see what I'm saying. But these plants are beautiful, right? Of course they are. They, they can just screw up. They can come in really uneven if they don't get a good pH or good nutrients. I speak from experience. They can go a bit awry. They can go very crispy if they don't get the water they love. For example, crystallinum that I showed you before, the really big boy. Don't give him enough water. He's going to be okay. Don't give this enough water. It's going to let you know it's, it's not happy with you. It's going to tell you it's pissed and it will show signs of that on the leaf. It will show signs of the bottom very quickly. These things can go super crispy. They can come in super wonky. They can grow fat. They can grow thin. It really does depend. Now I find that fatter leaves normally stem from lower light and the thinner leaves stem from higher light. So if you want really thin leaves on your plant, I suggest going much higher light and a little bit lower humidity as well. Um, I think high humidity seems to produce fatter ones. Definitely, 100%. I have learned that. I don't want to put you off completely. You can care for them. They're just, ugh, they're just not easy. And I think it really depends on your conditions and your, not your watering style, but just the, the way that you care for your plants. You'll either click with them or you won't, in my experience. I think I click with them, but I've had to change a lot of things about the way that I care for these plants in order to click with them. So I'm not trying to put you off. They do have a price tag, by the way. So a lot of people tend to pay the money and then they do get a stump and then it sucks and they get put off buying Anthurium. I would honestly just wait to get one until you're a bit more experienced. Maybe go for AG or Crystallinum, um, Forgetti, I just something else that's a bit velvety and a bit veiny to get you on the path. But either way, this guy is obviously very stunning. I'm just, I'm not going to sit here and say he's easy when he's not. I'm not going to sit here and say that he's really difficult when he isn't. He really is in the middle. So this is Anthurium waraquinum, also known as Queen Anthurium. Oh, there's a big plant down here and I'm dreading picking it up. I hope it's not soon. It's literally, it's the next plant. It's the next plant. Great, cool, awesome. Okay, so I have a plant bigger than that that I'm about to pick up. But it's honestly quite an easy Anthurium and you can find them quite often. This one's been thrown around a lot. I think it's because it is a good grower. So 
So I know as a lot of growers are producing this a lot more than a lot of other plants. This plant, for example, is coming out for sale a lot more than uh, Anthurium wara queen of the queen ants. Now there is a lot of reason why queen anthuriums aren't often for sale, and that's probably because the shops are struggling to grow them nice, right? I am one of those shops, so that's not me slating other shops. So that's probably why the queen anthurium doesn't um, it doesn't crop up often anyway. But anyway, we're not talking about that. We've moved on. So this plant is a lot more readily available and it's a lot easier. It doesn't look the same. If anything, it doesn't look half as good, but it is a nice staple if you want to just move up on your difficulty from, say, any of the plants in the last category and you want to do it a little bit more safer than the queen because this is easier than queen. I'll pick him up now because he's huge. Oh my God. Okay. Right. Oh, can you tell he sits on my top shelf? Because there's no way anything could house him. There's no shelves in here that could house him. So this guy here, this beautiful boy, is Anthurium Magnificum. He is, he's got kind of an Ace of Spades vibe. This is very, very soft, by the way. So I'm going to be very gentle with him. This isn't hardened off. I will spin the plant in a moment. He's got some acclimation damage, I think, from moving him up there from down here. But this isn't hardened off. He doesn't get super veiny or anything like that. He's quite understated. So if you like that, this is definitely for you. He's not super dark, like a lot of Anthurium. Like he's not as dark as Crystallinum in my experience. He stays a bit lighter. You can probably darken them up if you give them less light, of course. This might be getting too much light. I don't really know. But that's his newest leaf, so I'm going to be very careful with him. This one is not so good. It's folded his little ears back. I don't know why that is. He's got a little bit of acclimation damage on there from moving him upstairs, as of some of the others. This is a new leaf grown upstairs. Obviously, this is the newest, so it's sized up quite well. This is a leaf here. If I scoot him round. Oh my goodness, I'll try and not twat my mic. There is another one there. So he's much darker. Maybe I'm lying. Maybe they do get quite dark. In my experience, they're not as dark as, as a lot of other Anthurium, though. They're definitely on the lighter side. And then this one's real bad. This one he came in with, I think. Either he came in with it or he grew it very quickly and the leaf was on its way out when I got him. Um, cause this was quite a while ago. Yeah, it's the oldest leaf. And this one looks a bit shit, basically. But that's him at his arguably most mature, I guess. Cause it's taken some time to get him back to size. So he is a bit dark. I just don't find him as dark as the others. And he is veiny, but he's not a full on veiny boy. He's just, he dabbles. Okay, he does it on a weekend or whatever you wanna, however you wanna evaluate it. But they are very easy. You will see all the leaves I've managed to get from this guy. And it's more leaves than the Crystallinum. It's more leaves than the Queen. It's more leaves than any of them. So I guess from that, I can tell you that in my experience, they are fast growers. Now I have a lot of these growing at the minute. They're all babies. They're all got new leaves popping everywhere. So they're going to be a nightmare when they grow. You can get them quite easy. I don't know how much they are. I really don't because I've had these a long time. I've had these months and months. So I can't remember the last time I even bought some in. It was a long time ago. So I can't tell you how much they are, but I can tell you that they're fast, clearly. Case in point, very fast and just very pretty, but pretty in quite a minimal way. This isn't your anthurium luxurians where it's just like, holy shit, you know, I've entered the room. This is a lot more understated. He's really nice. He's longer, isn't he? Is he longer than the other ones? Yeah, a little bit. He's longer. He's going to harden off beautifully though, isn't he? Anthurium magnificum. Very, very nice. Reasonably thirsty. Reasonably thirsty, these ones. Very pretty though. Look at him. Oh my goodness. He's so nice. This next anthurium I'm going to show you is quite small, but a lot of people grow these very, very large, and it's because they are very impressive when they're large. I have to say, they are very regal, and that is a clue as to what anthurium it is. As I say, this is a small boy, but this here is anthurium regal. He's only a little babby. I don't think he's regular form regal. He's a little bit of a variation on it. Um, so if it doesn't look quite right, that's why. I do have some on the wall, but obviously I can't pull them off the wall. I can't really show you. It would be very, very difficult to. So this is the only one I've got that is popping at the minute. The rest of them don't really look right. But he's very, very beautiful. He's not that easy. He's not that difficult. I used to think this plant was like the most difficult plant on planet Earth, but it, it turns out it's, it's not. It's me. <laughs> They're not super impossible. Now, a lot of people import them and very quickly they'll go brown and crispy in the same way that a queen anthurium does. I would liken their care a lot between each other. I think that these are a little bit easier than a queen. I just find queens really difficult, can you tell? They're not to be sniffed at, they are great. I do think they have a price tag and that's because um, their veins are like totally different to any other anthurium. I will try my best to put an image of what I'm talking about in there. I hope I have one. Yeah, this, this veining isn't really illustrating what I'm talking about, but anyway, the care is good. 
really high humidity and they'll be okay. They don't like to be fussed with. Just give them high humidity. Make sure they don't dry out and leave them well alone. Just leave them well alone. Just look at it from afar and you'll be all right. They're not super easy. That's why, of course, they're not in the beginner's list. They're not on the worst list because they're not that bad, but they're not on the beginner's list. They're okay. They do have very dark foliage. I don't know if that's obvious to see that. And the veins get a lot more prominent as they mature and they get really, really nice lobes on them. They get really, really pretty ears, really like handlebar triumphant ears. They're really, really nice plants. I don't know how many people have these. I don't know how many people want these. I think a lot of people fear these. They want them because they look sexy, but I think a lot of people fear these in the same way that people do with the queen it's this is very comparable to the queen if i'm honest very very comparable lovely plant though it's so small i don't know if i should sell them at that size i think maybe people might be less intimidated by that size maybe gorgeous plant do i recommend it for beginners not really no i think once you've got a couple of anthurium under your belt and you're confident yes go for it but not for your first plant really not for your first plant the next plant I'm showing you that is an intermediate plant. This isn't actually the plant. I believe it's a hybrid, so it's not full what this is. That doesn't make any sense, but it's just a hybrid. So this plant here is Anthurium, I think it's Papal Papalaminum, Papalamium, something like that. Except I don't think this is just that. I think this is a hybrid with something else. Now I was sold this uh, famously, I think it was early last year now, as, what was it sold to me as? I think it was like Dark Mama or something like that. And I thought it was, it seemed to match to me. Um, this is grown in much fatter, but the one I had was way longer, way longer and way kind of thinner and more coffin shaped kind of thing. Obviously that, that's not how it's grown in. So I'm showing you this, this isn't exactly what I'm talking about. This is kind of a hybrid, but I will try and find an image and put it on the screen now so you can see what I'm talking about. Again, this is this is an in-betweeny plant. They're not super easy, they're not super difficult. They don't like to dry out. They can kind of screw up new leaves very quickly. New leaves do come in very chocolatey though. I wouldn't even say that was bronze. I would say it was chocolate. It's quite sexy. They do, of course, turn green. Again, that's Mr. Feed a little bit there, so it's not as green as it should be. I do need to feed all my plants. This is, I don't think it's the leaf it came in with. I think this has grown with me. I just think it grew last year before the move, and obviously moving from the old place to this place, pretty much everything took a hit. It's a slow grower. I can tell you that it's very slow. It's not like a Magnificent, for example, where it just pops everything out all day. This is much slower for me personally, in my experience. But it is very nice. And if you like this chocolatey thing, it's, it's definitely the plant for you. Not only that, but when it comes in, look. You see the back of that? See if I can show you the back of that really well. Look at that. I'll cover my face with it. There you go. <laughs> I have to do weird things in order for you to be able to see these plants. It does come in very sexy. It just doesn't stay like this. So I had to mention this plant because obviously I keep it here. I have a few of these, not many at all, but I have a few and I saw him and I thought, yeah, he's kind of in the middle. So I'll put him in again. This is probably not the full plant. This I believe to be a hybrid, but I'm not sure. I haven't seen pictures of this plant recently. So when I say this and you see a picture next to me and you're like, Kaylee, that looks like a different plant. I haven't looked it up. <laughs> I'm just saying I think this is a hybrid and I don't know what we're saying that it's a bit of a, a no ID situation. So very, very beautiful though. I wouldn't even say go for this plant if you like things like Ace of Spades because it doesn't stay dark, right? This comes in like this, but it, it goes green. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. There's, there's only so many ways I can not recommend it, right? I don't recommend it. It's just slow. It's just a bit meh. Pretty plan. I'm not, I'm not knocking. I'm not saying it's ugly. It's just, you can do better. I really think you could do better. I'm like that friend after a breakup. I'm like, you can do so much better. You don't need ham. This here is my next plant that is intermediate because I don't find them that easy. This here is Anthurium Silver Blush. He's very nice and he's very, very round. And the cool thing about him is that he has an awful lot of silver. I have a little bit of coir on this guy. He has an awful lot of silver on his leaves. Now he's pretty and he's different and I get why you'd want it. But is it the easiest plant in the world? Honestly, no. Especially in terms of acclimation when you bring them in, they won't look good. They just won't look good for long at all. They will start turning all around the edge. And that's even bringing them into a high humidity environment. They just don't like being shipped. Crystallinum can be similar. I mean, a lot of anthuriums can do that. Don't get me wrong. Most anthuriums do, but regal crystals can do it. Queens can do it as well, but th this is very, very prominent with these. So it will take a little while to grow them back if you've brought them in essentially 
they are worth it. I would say that they're, they're very unlike a lot of other Anthuriums. They do stay reasonably compact. This guy's a bit longer on the back because he was grown at the back, so he's tried to like reach up to the light a little bit more. But they're very, very pretty. They're very cute. I just don't necessarily recommend them. I definitely feel a difficulty increase with this compared to obviously the first category. Even the last plan I mentioned is probably a little bit easier than this one, to be quite honest. This is, it's not the best. Is it beautiful? Yeah. Is it collectible? Yeah. Should you get it if you like it? Yeah. Um, I don't think you'll kill it. I just think you might struggle to grow it a little bit. Maybe I'm just bad with this plant. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? It's very, very pretty. It's not a dark plant at all. That's probably coming off quite well on camera. These aren't dark plants at all. The, the green is, is quite a light green and the silver is plentiful. Light in color, very round, very compact, very cute, but mm, I, I wouldn't. I know you might be attracted to this, but honestly, go for something else first. Go for something else first. I, I don't want anyone getting disappointed, but it is a beautiful plant. Don't get me wrong. Right. My last category, the worst category. I have two plants in this category. Now I could have added more, but I wanted to do it heavily based on my experience. And if I haven't had these plants, you know, in here a lot, I'm not fit to tell you anything based on my experience. Does that make sense? Like I know, for example, there is a plant called Anthurium splendidum that is horrendous to look after. Everyone says it is. I don't have it here though. I think I had them in, was it two years ago now? I got two in, they died. I haven't had them since but I can't concrete say that based on my experience, you know, they're this, they're that, they're whatever. So I haven't included stuff like that. So yes, there are a lot of very difficult Anthurium, but in my experience, I cannot give you that information. You feel me? I'm not the kind of person that's just gonna whop a lot of plants on a list and just talk to you about them. I'm not doing that. I want to give you as much information as possible. So I only have two on my list for the worst. And honestly, as I've said before, Anthurium are difficult. And in my shop, I'm not gonna try and sell the really difficult Anthurium because I can't keep them very well. They're not gonna ship well. They're not gonna last when someone gets them into their house. It's still gonna cause me problems after sale. So I like to not keep them. I might keep it for me, but other than that, I tend not to keep them. So the only other two plants that I have to show you, one of them I don't have, and that's really testament to how not good it is. Now I do have, I say I don't have it, I do. I think I have two stumps, maybe three stumps. I can't remember how many I bought in, but I know that all of them pretty much died, including the one I hauled for you guys. You have seen this plant before. I might be able to find footage of it, I'm not sure. But the first plant in the worst category is Anthurium Peltigerum. I think that's how you say it, I'm not really sure. They have no lobes at the top, nothing like that. It's totally round like a forgetty eye. And they have a really, I think they have like a really fibrous stem as they grow. It's really nice. The base goes really fibrous and it reminds me of like coconuts. It's, it's really quite nice. It's a beautiful plant. Do not get me wrong, but oh my God, not the easiest. Seriously, I, they didn't survive import, most of them. Do you know what I mean? I think one of them did for longer and that's the one I had but they didn't do very well at all. They're just a nightmare. Now I am gonna try and get some more in and I'm gonna try again. I'm not gonna let that completely beat me because I think they're beautiful and I think they might be able to be beaten into submission. I don't know. I'm gonna try again, but in my experience, they were real, real bad. So I do not recommend, despite the fact they look great. I don't actually think they're even cheap. So that's another thing. And I suspect they don't travel well. They're not often sold because they're a pain in the ass. So I think, Shops trying to photograph them and get them out onto, you know, their stores. It's not going to happen very quick because they are a nightmare. You will import them and they probably will turn into stumps if they survive. Not an easy plant at all. So I'm not going to waste too much time on it because I don't have it, but they are a nightmare from my experience. The last plant I have to show you that I'm putting in worst, this plant, it can almost represent a lot of different plants for me because I say this all the time on my channel. I tell you that corrugated anthurium or corrugated anything actually doesn't do very well. Corrugated anthurium, corrugated philodendron, a lot of them tend to be a pain in the ass. It's just, it's just a thing. It's just a thing. So I have a one here, funny enough, not surprisingly called Anthurium corrugatum, and this one is on its way out. I don't know if you can tell. This, I think, is the one I hauled for you guys a while back, and I got it in before Christmas, I think, and I waited to haul it, and I showed you guys, and it was doing fine. It's on a slow decline, I think. It's not doing great. It could be too much light, but uh, that's just, you can tell it's going. Can you see that? 
Yeah, you can see that on camera. It's going to go yellow. It's, it's going to turn into a stump. It's not growing at all. It hasn't even tried. It hasn't gone crispy around the edge, so that's great. This is the leaf that I originally got on import, by the way. It's lasted a long time, but it's not happy. It's just not happy. It's not doing anything like a lot of the other anthurium that I have do. Is it beautiful? Yes, of course it is. All of these plants are beautiful. It just, it just hates me, or it hates the shop, or it hates its life. I don't know. It uh, could be all three. Who knows? So it's very, I would say this one is suede-like. Obviously, it's corrugated, hence my point. It's got really pretty back to it. It's quite nice. It's hard to describe this. It's, it's shit, right? <laughs> In terms of its care, it's shit. It won't die overnight, though, like the last plant I mentioned. It will die much slower because they've all done this. I do have another one somewhere. It looks worse. If I don't know if I can pull it out. Give me a second. Let me try and pull this out. Here's another one. You see that? Looks just as bad. Well, I mean, it looks worse. One would say it looks just as bad for it. looks way worse. Same plant. It's just, honestly, they just hate me. They do not like me. I've got water all over the floor. Not an easy plant. As I said, this, this is going to go. And I think it's going to go to a stump. And I'm going to have to do some magic to bring it back. It's lovely. I just, mm, I'd be really apprehensive about selling these, for example, in the shop because of how difficult they are. I know that someone's going to get this at home and be like, well, it's going yellow. It's dying. Now what? Do you know what I mean? Now what? Now what do I do? So I don't know how the journey on this is going to be. I don't see a bright future for this plant in my shop. And that is why they don't do anything. It's been months. All the other plants that I've had in are fine. They're all on a massive growth spur right now, actually. I don't know if you can tell, but they're all doing really well. Everything in the shop is doing really well. All the plants are hungry, of course, but generally they're doing really well. Seriously, just, just corrugate anything. Just pain in the ass, a pain in the ass, with the exception of the luxurians, but I wouldn't call that corrugated. This luxurians right here, I'm going to pick him up because he's hot, let's just face it. This I wouldn't call corrugated. It's borderline reptilian. It's just different. It's not the same as being corrugated. And a lot of people would use that terminology to describe it, but it's just not. It's just it's a completely different plant. I'm pretty sure these were brought in at the same time. And this one's grown, it's done well, and it's fine, and this one hasn't. And they're in the same substrate as well, aren't they? Yeah, they're in the exact same substrate, same light, same everything. This one's done better. So there you go. So that is actually the last plant in my video. As I mentioned before, I'm not willing to put plants on this list for the sake of it. I also like to be able to show you the plant. I also like to have had enough of that plant to give you some of my experience. So I don't want to mention a plant that I've had less than 10 of, for example. Do you know what I'm saying? I want to be able to give you that experience that I've had. Now, I will probably do another easy Anthurium one in the future. I've said the same thing about this as I'm saying about the Philodendron video that I did because Philodendron are scratching the surface. Anthuriums, less so much. I think this does cover a lot of the popular ones. Not all of them, but a lot of them. In the future, I may do another video. It probably won't be anytime soon because I have to source these things and then I have to test them and find out if they're good, if they're bad, if they're tough, if they're not tough, and all the rest. So you will probably get another Anthurium video in the future. I think a Philodendron video would probably come a lot sooner than that. That is it for this video today, though. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Have you found different things? Have you found the same things? Do you know of another really easy Anthurium, for example? Do you know of another absolutely terrible Anthurium that people should just stay away from, not even look at it twice? Let me know in the comments down below. I love reading this kind of stuff from you guys. I think it's really, really fun to see what works for some people and what doesn't work for some people. And part of me likes hearing the horror stories a little bit. Like, yeah, if you've got any horror stories, then don't be shy. We'd all love to read it, really. It makes me feel better knowing that other people fail at this stuff. Because as I mentioned before, I'm not the best Anthurium person in the world. I'm really not. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. If you'd like to see any of my other videos and you're not already subscribed, then please hit that subscribe button and feel free to have a look through my channel. I have a lot of different playlists on a lot of different things. If you like this video, then please leave a like down below. And until then, I will see you next week. Bye guys.